What is up, YouTube family? Thank you guys for tuning back into Will Burn Shenanigans. My name is Chad. This is my wife, Dia. We are back with another <coughs> great reaction video. Uh, we've been on the journey of uh, Joey Diaz and Theo Vaughn. Um, it's been funny because the stories that they tell are super hilarious. But now we're just going into uh, Joey Diaz by itself. And this video is titled The Best Storyteller Ever. Cause he always got the best stories we uh, we all know that but before we dive in if you guys are new make sure you guys subscribe to this channel give this video a thumbs up notification bell also all our other links to all of our other channels are down below if you'd like to check those out click away subscribe and join all of our families but let's dive in guys let's see what joey talking about what's the deal with airplane peanuts but the ali's were the first people i ever met ever beside my godfather that ever spoke to me about sex. And then I had this Puerto Rican dude on my block, Puerto Rican Nelson. He lived in the back. He was a bartender in the city. He used to always ask me. And he wasn't a freak or nothing. I always thought that at one point he would molest me. Yeah. And even till today, I think deep sometimes. Did fucking Puerto Rican Nelson ever molest me? Because he used to always have a robe on and slippers and shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he walked around? Oh, my God. Puerto Rican Nelson. Was... I love that you're not sure if he did. You feel like it's maybe... Yeah, like, I think, did he ever dope me? Like, he even pull a Cosby on me? Because everything about him fits like an M.O. He was just a good dude. Yeah. That we used to go outside and help us fix our bike. And he was a Spanish dude. And he was just, you know, he had the sideburns and the leather jacket. And it was the fucking early 70s. And I moved to Jersey. And he would talk to a bunch of us, and one day he would take us in the back. His claim to fame with me was that I became friends with him. And i go over there, and he had a black friend uh, that had went over to the, the Rock of Gibraltar, and he brought pictures back. And then he would just talk to me. And then one day, he asked me to meet him. Just laugh. You had a couple of beers. You ever go to somebody's house, and you, you go to their house a lot, and they're sober? But one day you catch them in their fucking hammock. Yeah. And we go over there, and it's like early in the morning. Like, I used to go over there every morning at 10 and wake them up and, 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 and what's up, man? What are we going to do today? Give me an hour. I'll go out there and play stickball with you. And he'd come out with coffee, and he reeked of alcohol. Yeah. You know, he was <laughs> one of those dudes in the summer. You know, no air conditioning. Or Just a dynamite dude. Yeah. And one day uh, I knock on the door, and... He answers with a towel around him, and he sits down like he's all fucked oh. up. I go, Nelson, you gonna play football? He's like, man, not today, you know, and all this shit. He goes, come back in like two hours. So, you know, we were, in those days, you're punctual. Yeah. Like, we were there in two hours. He answers, though, you guys again? The fucking curtains were still up. He invites us in, he's got a towel on. You know, he turns a light on and there's like a table filled with alcohol, you know, and like. Oh, yeah? How old were you at this point? Twelve. <laughs> oh, snap. Well, I can't remember man. who what? the fuck I walked in there with. Like, it was like six of us in the neighborhood that liked Nelson, but two of us actually interacted a little closer with Nelson. Yeah. I was Spanish, so I understood Nelson's world. I knew Puerto Rican people, but I can't believe who else <laughs> was the other guy that mingled with Nelson. So we had woken Nelson up. He goes, come in, come in. We sat on this couch. You guys want a soda? He gives us a soda. He puts the TV on. You can see he's still fucked up from the night before. He's got the towel on. And he's like, so you guys get late? And we don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Like Nobody ever well? spoke to me like that. I had uncles that would ask me, did anybody suck your dick yet? Yeah. Are you pissing sweet yet? That type of At shit. At 12? This... <laughs> you oh, yeah, yeah. When you're Spanish, they preguntan, oye, tu me aduce, you know what I'm saying? Great. Yeah, it's, it's a great line. <laughs> but Nelson was basically the first person ever. But like, oh I, I ain't known about sex, but Nelson was the first person ever that said it could be yours, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, what do you mean you never had sex? Oh, I thought he made it. I, I was like, like right now, she'll come over and clean your pipe. And we're, like, and we're both like fucking shit in our pants. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, you come up with like ten dollars or something. We're like, nah, nah, nah. So that was it. He never talked about it again. And then one day we're sitting there like a month. I just love this guy. Did you say ten dollars? Like a, a guy month. in a fucking towel as neighborhood boys over and offers to get them all over. And he's drunk. Because he's outraged that they haven't had sex at fourteen or twelve. <laughs> 
So he was cool as fuck. He used to play b- basketball with us and shit. So one day I go over. I can only imagine coming home. Like, my mom was that mom to ask you when you came in from the neighborhood, like, what'd you do today? Or like, oh, what'd you guys get into? Could you imagine? Oh, yeah, we was in this dude's house with a towel on. Like, you know, he's talking about getting my wee wee sucked. Like, I can see my mama now grabbing me by the ear out the door, like, knocking on dude's door. You like hanging out with the little kids? Just imagine. I could just imagine it because she has done some embarrassing stuff like that before. Not that I've been in somebody's house with a towel on, wrapped around naked with beers on the table. With this kid, and he starts telling us. What's his name again? Puerto Rican Nelson. We go. <laughs> <laughs> is it Pete Capitalized? No, Puerto Rican Nelson was cool as fuck because he used to bring us weed from the city. Oh my god. And he would actually give us neighbor? seven joints for five dollars. Wow. He really took care of us. It wasn't like he was a bad guy. We, By bringing you guys to weed. To me, meant the world. Because a lot of people could bring you weed over in those days, but they say, I take a joint off the top. Hmm. He was like, I, I got to go over it anyway. Don't worry about it. The guy gives me a better deal. Puerto Rican so I always around. liked him because of that. So one day we're there, and a, ch- and a girl's there. A girl comes out of his bedroom. Me and my buddy are like, wow. Look at Puerto Rican now, some of the broad. She sits on his lap and shit. And he's like, yeah, this is my girl. And he's feeling her up. And he's making out in front of her. <laughs> and feeling the titties and shit. So why's he getting the whole show at 12? And me and my buddy are frozen. Like, we're just, I can feel, I can feel, I can't remember. Who the fuck it was? So wow. boom, how old got, was this guy? This guy had to be twenty eight, and the bro was like twenty one. Oh my but he god, was, he young. was one of those. He had to be twenty six, maybe. He he was from somewhere else, and he lived there. This is before the computer, before neighborhood watch, and before <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and no one's freaked out by a pack of twelve year olds hanging out with them. No, I'm because like, in those days, a lot of parents came out. And play with kids. And you I know, that's different now. Kids. See, it's different now. I would never now. be able to play with a random kid no, in my neighborhood. No, so everybody knew him from the neighborhood. And in those days, we wanted to go into the murky waters. Yeah. And he was kind of opening the door. Not really, to be honest with you. Mm. It took a long time. It's not like he lurked us into his oh, house. Oh, my God. And so said, you you guys want to have sex. This house. is after we knew him for a year. Right. We'd, we'd go back there all the time and get water after a basketball game. We knew him, you know. Obviously. But now he knew we were growing up, and he knew what our needs were. Oh my I look God. at it now, like he was, he was just trying to, but we couldn't handle it. Yeah. So one day we're sitting back there, we had a basketball game, and he's like, hey man, what'd you think of that fucking broad the other day? Me and my buddy like, oh, she was bad. Do you have any other friends? You know, he goes, tell, tell these guys how hot she was. And me and my buddy's like, yeah, she was hot. And he's like, oh, when can we see it? He goes, listen, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> he goes, listen, I'm going to fuck her tonight in the living room. And I'll leave the window open. You guys can come by and listen. <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess they went. Let me guess. And y'all went over there and watched. That's why you he died. How many times I go to an audition, I hear this. Oh, but it's like story. My, this is my... A lot of people don't like to audition. I like to audition. And I'll tell you why. Because I fuck with them. Because you're funny. You know, I've ripped my pants. Out. You know, if you watch... Uh, uh, two, what's that show on CBS that's been on forever... I don't Which one? The Monday nights. The Big Bang Theory. The, the one before I that. You, how how I, I Met Your Mother. Yeah. I did How. You know how I got How I Met Your Mother? I didn't even know you did it. Yeah. If you watch the episode, you're like, Joey, you're an extra. I didn't know that. I'm an extra. What the hell? You're you know an extra? Why? Because I went into the audition. I had no underwear on. And there was a, you see these things that pop out of chairs? Yeah. The side things, the way you mm-hmm. your armrest. Right. And she goes, get up to read. When I, when I got up to read the, the scene. The fucking thing got caught in the hole in my pants and my dick came out. <laughs> All three women sat there and I go, did you see the egg roll? And then I lost them for sure. They even told me, they go, you got the job. As I was walking you down the street on Fox, my phone rang. My agent goes, go back. You didn't even read. I didn't even read. And they had called my agent and said, we love this guy. <laughs> I went back and the I went, didn't even read. Dick. They saw uh, the Cuban egg roll, you know. Well, but they were the, probably not used to someone with confidence that didn't give a fuck. Oh, you know, I, I went to an audition one time. Bro, where the guy had, to, I'll never forget this. The guy was a white trash guy. Like this family moved in. It was a pilot for ABC. And this guy uh, is one of those guys that uh, he had a little circular pool in front of his house. And he was, he was water and shit, but at the same time he had like a thong on. Oh. And he's fat. He's got jewelry on, like one of those guys in like Long <laughs> Island, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> so I'll never forget, I get to the audition, all these guys are there, Tony Longo, God rest his soul, all these big Italian dudes. 
And I knew they were going to get the part, bro. I'm like, they're going to get the part. I'm not going to get it. But I had warm-ups on. All right, I had warm-ups on with the string, and I had white, tidy whities And I had a zip-up jacket, and I had a weigh 380. So I walk in, I go, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my pants off. And I said, <laughs> right? I'm taking my fucking sweats off. Dog, I walk in, and what do you think these two ladies say to me? Hold on one second. We'll be bit with you in a minute. So they turn around. That's my cue, bitch. I took those sweatpants off. I took the shoes off and my socks, and I walked closer, and I took my shirt off. When they turned back around, all I had was boxer shorts on. Like the tiny whities that's it. Tits hanging out, <laughs> stomach hanging over the underwear. And they, and they did, as soon as they turned around, they were like, oh my God. They're like, that is terrible. Put your shirt back on. Oh, I'm like, I'm not putting on shit, all right? I'm reading this motherfucker how it is. Oh. So you were supposed to like wave and say good right. morning. Right. And they're like, action. And, I'm, and they're like, can't even look at me because I'm completely <laughs> naked. You know, and they can't even look at me. And I'm making believe I'm flipping burgers. And I look over at them and I go, living like a doctor. <laughs> That's it. They booked me. I, when I got to the audition, what it's, what that was the read. Living like a doctor. They even gave me my own line. Half of those auditions I went into, they gave me whatever line I said in the audition. Like, whatever they said wasn't good enough. Like, I go in there with my own fucking line. Yeah, improvise. Yeah, that's wow. that's probably why you got it. Look, Jesus. look, look at Joey. He's just sitting there, there like a mook the Lord. That's when you were wearing those big daddy shirts. <laughs> yeah, look how big I was. Jesus Christ, He's you were right enormous there. back there. Oh Joe Sasson must have been like, what, 2000 then, right? That, yeah, this is 2000, 2002, 2000. I remember when I, when I met you, like right after I met you, I brought you onto the set of news radio. Oh, and they, they were all like, um, wh who is this guy? With the leather this, jacket on. Is this guy your friend? Like, I got that's Joey. <laughs> <laughs> the kids on 148th Street were Puerto Rican, Irish, Italian, a couple Jews, and all of them were tough. But we're talking same age range and everything. Same age whole range. Different world so up I, here. Before I got into Santeria, my mom would send me up to my godmother's house on 148th Street and Broadway, 20 blocks from the epicenter of the world, Harlem. You're 20 blocks from Harlem. You're, I was the heartbeat of New York City. I'm 20 blocks from the heartbeat of New right York now? City. Six, five. Oh, wow. So I'm hanging out down there on 88th Street playing buck buck and killing rats. <laughs> 148th Street. <laughs> complete, Six years old, you're killing rats. Complete different game. First yeah. day on 148th Street, they came up to me. How you doing? Ricky, whatever. And also, they're like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I don't know. I play, play stickball. And they're like, nah, you want to see a body? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, let's go see a dead body. So they were living I'm like, I like these kids. They took me down to West Side Avenue, and they had some guy who had been hit by a car. This is the 70s. This is like 65. There was no CSI. If you got hit by a car, you were there for like two or three days. You saw that your first dead body. The first dead six, body I saw, he was already had the flies on him, and they just threw plywood over him. And he was starting to stink, like, from 10 feet away. Like he had just been there maybe like Jeez. like these kids were he was right, right by the Hudson River. Good and we would day. walk down to the Hudson River. And then finally two days later we went down and it was a crime scene, obviously. Some fucking you know, in those days people didn't jog. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like today that there's jogging. Yeah. I can he kill you. I can time. kill you and drop you on a one seventy. <laughs> They'd never find you. Uh, today these fucking joggers <laughs> They're out there looking around. <laughs> and they always find bodies, joggers. Oh, it's not like they find like a $20 bill. You never yeah. see a jogger go, I found an envelope full of money. They always find some lady beat up and raped. What the oh, fuck kind of morning God. is that? That's true, imagine. That sucks. A <laughs> morning just ruined. <laughs> at six <laughs> all this we're only at six that's a creepy laugh and then one day i transferred from fucking catholic school got thrown out and i went to mckinley and now i had to go to school with john and all those other kids in that area and it, and it was not hard for me i can't lie to you it wasn't hard for me i i knew them already excuse me i knew half of them already from the neighborhood so in the sixth grade 
I fucking went to the courts like I did every day, and I'm playing basketball because I want to be good at basketball. Okay. And this kid, Richie Ferreira, wants to play basketball. So we're yeah. playing basketball, and he's kind of drunk. Oh, my God. What is I'm fucking 12. Drunk. You know, maybe 11, 12. And he's Richie drunk? Richie Ferreira's maybe 17. So oh. fucking in the middle of the game, I say, Richie, stop following us. And he pushes me, and he throws the ball down the fucking hill. I get up to push him, he just knocks the shit out of me. And I, I didn't cry or nothing. I just took it and went down to the corner and went and picked up the fucking ball and went home. And my pants were ripped. I tell the story on stage. Not in the extended version, but this all went down and Carmine was on his porch with Peter looking at this. This was a commotion. And the next thing you fucking know, I go home and I go in the shower. My mom's home. What the fuck is my mom doing? Am I going to the shower? The phone always rings when my mom is home, so I don't. But the next day is when, when I got home and she said, listen, we're going to go to the park. You got beat up yesterday and you didn't do nothing. And I'm like, Ma, what the fuck? So she takes me to the park. She takes the guy. We fight. He nope. beats me up again. My mom walks me home, tells me it's okay. That I'm going to get into a lot of brawls in my life. He went back to so go got get beat up, up twice? But oh my God. that's what Richie Ferreira does. What? He hires John Bender. To fight me. What? So I'm in the sixth grade one day, and John Bender comes in and he goes, Hey, fuck old Spick, whatever. We're fighting at three today. The time. It's always. You, Richie Ferrara. Da, 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 da. How, how old was John? Sixth grade. We're both the same age. What? Both the same age. Okay. So now I go home, I take my books out. Now, this was big time. This was weird because they thought Carmine was going to come. So Bobby got on the corner. They had people on top of the hill. And John showed up with every white kid in town. And all, I'm standing there with fucking Martin Perez, Valentin Faro, Dominic Special, Michael like Special. They just you know, dangerous. He showed up with 15 fucking kids. And they made a circle. And I fought him and he broke my nose. What the hell is going on? I gave him a black eye and he busted my lip. He really beat me up. And Why is he always getting beat up? And the next day, we just went to school like nothing happened. And I mean, like you went to school with a broken nose. And, and he goes, listen, what happened? I feel really bad. And he shook my hand. And I took it for what it was. I always knew something was going to happen between us one day where I'd stab him or something. Oh, my God. I didn't say nothing. What the what heck? He His stories are he like. He need to stop fighting at that point. Like he just the fact that up. your mom took you just to get beat up again. Like, say it's all right. Mom, I already lost. Yeah, you should have gave me that speech <laughs> the take, first fight. Then and take, then don't take me back because I'm going to get beat up again. Just don't take me back to get beat up again. That's sad. Like, mom, no. But I, I get the lesson. <laughs> That's just horrible. And they get beat up again. You got this whole crowd out there. He but said, if it makes, if it like, if it shows anything, like he was twelve, that guy was seventeen. Yeah, he, he seventeen year old to a twelve year old. That that's but his kind mom of, took it that's back. That's kind of not like, in a sense, a like an even fight. You can't take your kid back. Seventeen, you taking him back to get beat up again. You asking for it. Like that's just asking for it. I'm not going yeah, back. I don't know what was her logic taking, on that. Why one? was it like that at school though? Why was it when you had a fight? Why was it like the next day? Like he said, it was like the next day nothing happened. Like when it happened outside well, it, of school. it was not like that for him. He had a broken nose. No, but he said the next the day guy everybody. popped up at school with a black eye. No, but he said next day everybody's like normal. Like nothing oh, happened. Well, yeah. That's my thing. Like too, when the school fights happen at, at my high school, they'll fight at the park or something. The next day, like everybody's just like, we didn't just witness a beat down yesterday. Like, don't you go home and your parents be like, you got a black eye? Like what's going on? And then you come to school the next day. They call it up there. Probably say like, hey, this dude be or a girl beat up. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then it's just like a normal. Day, then they probably end up fighting at school again if it went down the wrong way. That happened a lot. But I don't know. His don't stories say. are. Yeah, he got some wild. They're wild as hell. <laughs> he was everywhere he should have been. That's what Man, the problem was. At a young age. <laughs> Just sit down. Seen a bo dead body at what? He said six, he seven. Was, he was living boys in the hood. And then the names of his friends, they sound like they was already part of the mafia. Man, All the names he named. I can't remember. believe he remembered like their first and last names. Because he's not just saying first and You're not going to forget them. Name. Valentino and all them type names. Like, I love that name, Valentino. You definitely done with the mafia at that point with them type names. But this is hilarious. I like these. Keep them flowing. I knew y'all was going to find some more. I told y'all to find some more. And y'all did. Thank y'all for that. Thank y'all for tuning back in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that great stuff. The link's down below. See y'all in our next video.